So I highly doubt the wind is gonna cooperate long enough for me to say everything I need to say. So I might have to voice over this. So be patient, sorry if it gets too bad. Hopefully, let's just get dive in. So this is the first night I'm here at the Grand Tetons. I hope that's how you pronounce it. That's how I've been saying it my whole life. So it'll be kind of embarrassing if that's not how you pronounce it. Let me know down below. Anyways, I scouted for like half the day. Um, I woke up in a national uh, forest somewhere, drove in and scouted and found this spot during midday. I'll put the shot up on the screen that I found for my scouting spot. Then I went and wrote an article, hung out for a little bit and came back. I'm just in a field of all these wildflowers, as you can tell behind me. And I planned on walking out here and finding like a patch, like a perfect patch. Found one that was decent and then the light just started to get crazy epic. And I didn't even go and get my graduated filters or my polarizer or anything. I just kept shooting. Hopefully something turned out. My only concern with the composition is that the flowers that are on the bush, some of them look pretty wilted already. Um, a lot of these are just because of the wind. There's some that I found that are that are better. I'm actually gonna look after I stop talking now and maybe wait for uh, that blue hour light. As you can tell, the sun, well, maybe you can't tell from this video, but the sun has gone behind the peaks now. So the light's not gonna be as good. Uh, all of this is gonna be in shadow as it just was. The problem was it just, it was still pretty harsh when it was visible above the peaks. So I'm not gonna get that golden light in the clouds. Maybe I can try something. I do think that maybe if we wait long enough for blue hour that I can get enough light on the foreground and make it look pretty good. So that's what we're gonna try. I'm gonna stick around for blue hour. I'm gonna keep looking around for better patches of flowers so that when I come for sunrise, where this will all be hit by sun, uh, it could look absolutely beautiful. And that's what I'm really hoping for is sunrise is gonna look magnificent here, or as Gavin Hardcastle would say, magnifiqua. <laughs> uh, if you don't watch him, you should check out his channel. He's Fantastic. Anyways, gonna keep looking for more flowers, take some more shots. I mean, we still got another uh, 30 minutes until the actual sunset, so um, yeah. So the sun is set, the clouds are a nice golden red, just like expected, but there's no light on the actual Tetons, uh, which we also expected. I don't know if I'll do, be able to do anything with this particular shot just because there's no light on those mountains. And I would show you my composition, but honestly, I, <laughs> uh, with how chaotic the light was for like almost an hour, I was just shooting as much as I could. Uh, I was changing compositions a lot when the sun crests the mountain. I was shooting F-16 to try to get a starburst, sunburst rather. Uh, when it was a little bit higher up, I was shooting through the, shooting really low and shooting through the, the flowers here and trying that. I was shooting portrait, I was shooting landscape, I was shooting all kinds of stuff. And as much as I wanted to take the time to film myself doing it, I really just wanted to keep trying to get shots. I will say the light was really harsh at that point in time. Not entirely sure if any of the photos actually came out because of that. And like I said previously, no clue in terms of the conditions of the flowers. Regardless, I'm gonna sit here and wait a little bit longer, keep taking a few shots. The shot that I'm trying right now, I could actually show you really quick if you want. Uh, I don't, you don't really have a choice, I just get to show you because, you know, this is a one way. Anyways, <laughs> I'll show you the composition. All right, so our composition here is actually a little special because we have two compositions. We have the one you see on your screen, so remember this, the mountains being this large, the nice red clouds. And then we're also using this composition that I shot about 10 or 15 minutes ago before the sun fully set. You can tell we're obviously in portrait mode. And the reason I wanted to do this was uh, twofold. One, when you're shooting at 16 millimeters, a lot of the times because of the barrel distortion and how distorted your image looks, your background just gets super tiny. So these mountains are definitely not that tiny in person. And it does a bad job representing of what this actual image should look like. Secondly, uh, because the sun was going down, and as you can tell, there's a lot of wind, capturing these flowers without motion and getting them still enough while capturing the detail and having a low enough ISO, I needed enough light in the image. So I killed two birds with one stone by capturing this image, waiting for the light to change into 
kind of what it is now. I'll go, uh, I was bracketing a little bit ago, but I'm not bracketing anymore because it's dark enough. But this is roughly what the light looks like, and I'm going to be able to take the slightly better light of the background, mix it in with those plants in the foreground, and also, most importantly, just make the mountains look like they should, considering the actual scene, the mountains are pretty large. So let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop, and we'll get that done really quick. Should be very easy, since our horizon line on our image is pretty straight, as you can tell. So let's do that. All right, so you just watch us capture that perspective blend in the field. It has been a little bit of time, my hair has gotten longer, and I am back in the studio. If you're new to this channel, I live in my SUV, so there won't be any studio lighting or anything like that for a lot of these videos. I'm gonna try to do my best to explain things in the best way possible and hope I don't get rained on at the moment. So let's jump into Lightroom. You just watched me capture these two photos that evening and I'm actually not gonna end up using these photos just because I like some photos that I took the next morning, which are these two photos, this one and this one, but the method is gonna be exactly the same. So it's still 100% applicable and I could do the exact same thing to the photos I took that evening. I just like these photos better and so that's what we're gonna blend together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit both of my photos separately, try to get the white balance and the colors right before I take them into Photoshop. So I've just done a few preliminary edits. I've brightened up the whites. I don't care about anything in the foreground here in terms of how it looks in the edit because all I'm gonna be using is the mountains in the background. And I'm gonna to go to my other photo. I've already done these edits and actually I'm gonna use two photos to blend together the foreground, but for now, that's gonna be a separate part of the edit. I'm not gonna include all that, that's just luminosity masking. You can check out the video here if you wanna do that. What I'm gonna do is just take this exposure and blend it with the bigger perspective to keep the tutorial a little bit shorter. So now that I have the two edits done on these images for the coloring and stuff that I want them to look like once they're blended together, I'm just gonna select both and right click, go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so now that our two layers are open, I'm gonna put the wider perspective at the top, and this is where we are going to perspective blend. This particular photo, I purposely knew I was perspective blending, so that horizon line is gonna make it way easier to include those new mountains. On other perspective blends, it could be a little more complicated. You can have an object between your two different images, and I'll talk about that a little bit at the end, just with some other examples, but this will keep it very simple and should make it very easy for you out in the field, just remember that using that horizon line to separate things makes it way easier to perspective blend in this case. So all I'm gonna do is select my photo, add a mask, come up here to select some type of marquee. It could be a lasso tool. I'm gonna to use the rectangle and I'm just going to select, it doesn't have to be perfect uh, and make a selection here. I'm going to fill with my foreground color, which is black. And when I'm using that mask, anything in black shows through, anything in white stays the same. I'm gonna deselect by pressing Command D or Control D, and now you can see that our mountains are in the background. Now, they're not exactly where we want them to be, so what I'm gonna do is go over here to the Crop Tool or press C. I'm gonna expand up my image a bit. It doesn't matter, you can just expand as much as you want and then crop it back down once you're done. So now that I have that cropped up, I'm gonna bring my mountains up and I'm gonna to try to align that horizon line in that picture with this one, something along these lines. So something else you can do if you're trying to blend that horizon line correctly is select your top layer, come down here and go to difference or overlay. I think overlay in this case will be better. And now I can kind of see as I move this background um, where those lines match up. So something maybe along here, I think is going to look good. So I'm gonna go back to here, set this back to normal, and then this is where the magic happens. It's super simple in this edit. All I have to do is come up here to my selection. I'm going to take a big, well, not that big, paintbrush uh, by pressing B to bring out my brush tool. Make sure hardness is at zero, and then I'm just going to paint left to right in black. Now, oh, the other thing to make sure that I just messed up is make sure your opacity is set to 100. I'm actually gonna make the brush a little bit smaller to start out. I'm gonna hold shift while I do this because I have a straight horizon. I'm gonna hold shift, click, and then I'm not gonna drag or anything and I'm just gonna click over here and that's gonna automatically make a brush stroke from left to right. Now, what, what you're gonna see is you're gonna come in here 
And you're gonna wanna fine tune a little bit of this, which is what I am doing now. So I'm, I just zoomed in. We're gonna go back to our brush. And we're just gonna, we're gonna kinda come in here. I'm gonna press X, which is gonna switch from my foreground and background color, which is just black and white. And as I'm pressing X, I'll be either removing or adding in a little bit more of that horizon. So pay attention to over here. You'll notice that these switch back and forth and I might be painting some things in and out. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice in this particular edit is that the background is now in focus and these flowers are not in focus. So something I could have done in this particular picture was focus stack. I didn't go through that trouble. I think that at the end of the day, this is just one of those things that will blend together pretty well and I doesn't necessarily need it. So if I zoom out here, you can tell that all of this is in focus and now the mountains are a little bit bigger uh, and definitely also in focus. But if you wanted to have a perfect focus stack from front to back, I would have taken maybe four exposures, focus stacked that foreground, and then just blended in this background. But to keep this edit simple and to keep this tutorial simple, I really just wanted to do this perspective blend uh, and get it looking good between these two horizon lines. And I think overall that this is pretty good. Um, I don't think there's much else I need to do. So I'm just gonna zoom back out, check my image, press C to go back down to my crop, crop it back down. My computer's gonna lag a little bit and select that. And then I'm gonna hit save. That's it. That's the perspective blend. I'm gonna turn this mask on and off. You can see what we did there in terms of a different exposure. So it's slightly darker and the mountains just look bigger. Now you're gonna ask yourself, well, is that cheating? In my, my opinion, as I explained in the tutorial part or the adventure out in the field part, is that a lot of times when you're shooting with a wide angle lens, those background mountains look absolutely minuscule. So we know in real life that these flowers are not bigger than the mountains, but perspective and that wide angle changes that and makes them look bigger. So what we can do is perspective blend, which is what we just did. And it gives you just a little bit more reality, in my opinion. The mountains should be larger in the photo. So something else you can actually do that I'm not gonna go into full detail about is even if you only took this one photo, you could actually cut out this top part of the image here and increase its size just using the same photo, uh, just like we did. Now we obviously took two photos, so we have better detail and better exposure but that is something you can do. So my final edit looks something along the lines of this. So here is the edit with the flowers in the foreground, our bigger mountains in the background. I think it turned out okay. Definitely better than the night before. Uh, yeah, so I, that's pretty much it. That's the whole perspective blend. Um, a few other things you can do, and I'm gonna put some images on the screen now, is this photo that I took in New Zealand of this river, which is in Mount Cook National Park, I believe. And this beautiful river, with glacial water look fantastic, but the mountain just, that perspective, it just made it look way too small. So what I did is I took the photo that you're seeing now, and then I increased the size of the mountain. But you can tell the blend was a little bit more difficult, specifically because the blend between the mountain and those hills that are in front of it is much more difficult. The, it's exactly the same method, I just had to blend between those hills and that bottom part of the image a little bit better. Another example is this photo in Kirkefell, which is in Iceland, where I took a seven shot pano. I think it was seven shots, might be five shots. But the mountain of Kirkefell just looks tiny because I'm shooting at such a wide angle. So what I did is just increased its size using the same exact photo. I didn't use a second photo to, that was a bigger version of the mountain. And I just increased its size in one of them and then blended it together as best I could just to add a little bit more reality to that photo. Now, the difference between the two is small, but I think it's big enough that it just makes it look like it should have when it was actually in real life. So anyways, that's the whole video. Uh, I told you that the, the edit part would be very easy. I hope it made sense, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can like it. If you loved it, consider subscribing. Uh, and also, there's a join button down below for a membership area that you only have to pay for a month if you want to, to be invited to a Discord community that is absolutely awesome. Uh, I get critiques and responses and we talk about photos and people are active every day and I genuinely just want more people on there. So just hit that join button, just watch the video, consider it. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next week. Later.